about to embark on a new career, you're about to start something new, but you have no contacts, you don't have a peer network, you don't have a social capital, you don't have the professional network. So what do you do? Stay tuned and you'll find out. I was here for the first time and I had no network. I had no peer network, I had no professional network. Um, and so being very tenacious was important. After setting my goal and knowing that I wanted to remain uh, within careers, with, within you know the career coaching and the career consulting uh, field, um, I needed to ensure that I understood how cycles worked, um, you know, within this area, within this labour market, and so I needed to do research on how often career fairs uh, were held, who holds and puts on and designs and plans and coordinates those career fairs because I needed to meet other professionals um, in this line of work. And so after achieving my first position, because I put myself out there, I saw a position posted and I drafted an email, attached my uh, resume and cover letter to the senior director at the time. And, um, you know, I applied and I was uh, invited for an interview. And this was within about two, three months of being in, of being, uh, in Ontario and um, getting myself ready for work. Um, and this was because I had gotten myself out there and I talked to other um, employment professionals within the area and they connected me with those opportunities. How did I find them out? I used the internet, um, I researched you know, organizations who do that line of work, and I started drafting emails to them, letting them know that I was interested, letting them know that I was ready and available to work. And so you have to recognize that you have a lot to offer. I'm gonna say that again. You must recognize you have a lot to offer. I've met with other newcomers, other uh, people who are new to a certain labor market. And I find that we sometimes allow ourselves to be intimidated. And so I guess one of my strategies that I'm sharing is that you have to find the confidence somewhere. You have to guster and garner the nerve to believe in yourself to know that you have survived the relocation. So therefore, you have the resilience. You have the resilience to translate that energy into a work environment. Having left everything that you know to now transition elsewhere, you have the tenacity, you have the drive, and you have the ambition. And so you have to work to mitigate the insecurity that sometimes comes with being new and not having that network that I was describing. And so you've got to reframe, reframe your thinking to realize that drive and ambition that is required to be successful in achieving your goals should also come from you recognizing what you have. I'll describe it for you again. So when I had moved, I did not have a network. So I could have been insecure and down about that. But what I did on the reverse was say, hey, I moved with a young family. So that means I'm driven. It means that I have a lot to offer my next employer. It means that I will be able to to use and, and to find the grit that is often required to achieve tasks that are set at work. And also means that the drive and ambition to be successful, I have it. So you need to make sure you're mitigating, mitigating sometimes that insecure voice, the notions and the negative thoughts that sometimes come when we're trying to achieve our goals. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit the like button, subscribe and leave us a comment. If you don't know where you're going, you won't know when you get there. And so I dare say that one of the things that you have to think about is writing down what your goal is in the first place, you know? So when four or five, about six years ago, when uh, my husband and I, with our two kids, moved to Canada, um, 
I don't know whether I should say I was gutsy and filled with resist, uh, resiliency and, and feeling empowered or whether it was just this amazing adventure risk taking that we want to do. But we took the risk. We moved, settled down and we started to strategize how to find employment. What do we want to do? For me personally, I've always loved supporting people who are transitioning, who are looking for work. I've always been inspired and empowered to help people find jobs, find employment, uh, gain promotions or be better leaders. One of my biggest passions, you know, help everyone reconnect with their, uh, help people reconnect with their passions, but their leadership potential. And so I knew that I wanted to remain in that sphere but I was new, new to Canada, new to Ontario, you know, new to greater Toronto Hamilton area. The first thing I did was research. I had to research the different sectors. I had to research organizations, which organization serves the same mission that I wanted to also be a part of. You know, whose mission was it to raise leaders, to nurture leaders and to embolden and empower them to be better leaders, stronger leaders, more confident and brave leaders. I had to research that. Who is doing that? Who shares that vision with me? Whose vision did I want to support, right, while I was new in Canada? So my work started from that very starting point of writing down my vision and making it very clear, right, but also then researching figuring out where all of these employers were, you know, how far did I want to travel? How, how much of a commute, you know, was important to me or not important to me? What were my values? What did that employer have to embody? What did it say on their website with the folks who work for them? You know, how do they feel about their environment? So my research was very, very focused, understanding that organization, that company, and how they do what they do. My well-being is very important to me. Um, congruence is extremely important to me. Remaining self-aware and wanting to live a very purpose-driven life. So the employers that I was willing to work for needed to be the same. So my research started there. I needed to realize that I had no social capital in Canada. And that's the same for a lot of newcomers, a lot of immigrants. When you move to a new country, you may not have friends, you may not have family. Um, you have to build your network from the very beginning again. And I know that can be daunting. It was for me, it was, it was for me too. It was scary, it was unnerving, but also exciting, depending on who you are and what your story is. I know it's different if you're a refugee or someone who's new to the country without a choice, but for my personal story, I know that we made the decision to move. And so recognizing the hard work that it was going to take was also really important. It's a hard work to do my research, like I had said before, figuring out who is around, who they are, who the employers are, right? Um, and then understanding what differentiates them from each other and which would be the right environment for me. And someone with small kids, I needed them. I needed my employers to be family friendly, right? So when you're setting yourself, when you're strategizing to achieve your professional goals, in this instance, employment, I needed to be very clear, very concise and very measured, but you know, with my approach. And so what else did I have to do? So I needed to come to become bold and be creative about who I engaged with. So after looking up the employers and seeing where they were dotted around, um, around Hamilton, around you know Mississauga, Toronto, because that's I knew that that's where I could go and where my commute would take me, I then needed to use Facebook, use LinkedIn to approach people that work for those organizations. And that's why in my last video, I talked about um, networking and putting yourself out there. Not all of us have networks, I understand that. It can often be more difficult when you are a person of color. I'm not saying that it's, it's the same for everyone, but there's a known difference. Um, and so remembering to be brave, believing in myself and approaching those that I, that I thought were like-minded was important. Um, and so I started to call up these organizations. In my field of work, it's called cold calling. 
So literally picking up the phone and calling organizations, calling reception, um, you know, reaching out to people on LinkedIn and asking, you know, do you work for XYZ company? How has it been for you? And so that needs a lot of confidence. This can be daunting, I will admit, you know, when you're new, you don't have the social capital, you don't have the peer network, you're having to build that from scratch. And that's important. This is a universal strategy and skill. When you set a goal, you have to ask yourself, who are the professionals in these areas? Where do they mix and mingle? Where do they network with one another? Are there any associations that exist? Are there any professional networks that you can join that might be free? And these are questions that we can ask ourselves, but it's also strategies that you can implement. When I moved to Ontario, as I'd shared before, what I did was ask myself, who do I want to work for? I knew that I eventually wanted to end up back in academia, but what did I do? I exposed myself to skill building opportunities. I took a non-profit position um, supporting people into employment because I knew that it would be building blocks to my career. So my strategy was to start there. After researching the organization, knowing that they are a non-profit and are well respected in the Hamilton area and they effort in a very ethical and you know, um, integrity way, work with clients helping them to strategize their way back into second careers, strategize their way back into employment. And that was important to me because I knew I would continue to build skills and use skills that I, using skills and passions and interests that I was good at, right? So I worked in that position for a while. And in the meantime, researching, meeting people, going to career fairs, making sure that I was talking to other professionals in, in, you know, within the field. And the best, one of the best places I found were career fairs. Often career fairs happen you know, with groups of organizations together. And attending those fairs, you know, boothing at those fairs, exposed me to other professionals in those areas. And I would introduce myself, you know, working to polish my career pitch and my elevator pitch, you know, sharing who I am, the skills that I have to offer, what my strengths are, and what is the most important thing to me. I share that openly all the time, you know, to those that I meet, uh, those who have now become friends. Um, and, you know, from that position, I knew that I wanted to grow. I took on um, work tasks that were stretch assignments. You will hear this uh, referred to very regularly within this area of um, you know, goal setting and, and professional development. It's called accepting stretch assignments. And stretch assignments are assignments that um, help you to grow. They might be out of your comfort zone, but they are beyond, maybe just a little beyond where you are at the moment and what your capabilities are. So there are, they are things that you can do, but you just have to work a little harder and a little smarter to achieve them. And so stretch assignments give you, give you the opportunity to show your strengths and your skills to your employer, to your supervisor and to those, or your mentor, those who are, you know, um, who you are very visible with. And the most important thing about stretch assignments is that they increase your visibility. Stretch assignment reveals extra strengths that you have it shows and demonstrates that you're ready for the next level and so i volunteered for stretch assignments i volunteered to do tasks that maybe um you know an extra work maybe extra workloads that others do not want to take but what it said to my supervisors and my the employers was that i was ready i was eager and i was capable so as you strategize to achieve uh, your professional goals think about things that will increase your visibility to those who are watching to your mentors and the things that communicate to them that you are ready and you're willing to take on the extra work and the extra assignments you know i can appreciate just how difficult it can be you know to be embarking on a, on a new career and you don't know what to do you don't know who to connect with, you know, you're having to build your network from scratch, but it's possible. 
it's possible i am not saying i am bill gates i'm just saying that i implemented these strategies and it worked for me i've been able to transition and move and um you know get promoted throughout my lifespan now in canada by utilizing these um you know these these strategies by continuously building up my network um i didn't have any when i got here you know, I use LinkedIn to research organizations, find people who work there and send them a note so, you know, to connect with them, meet with them over coffee. Now it's going to be a virtual coffee. Um, you know, and I, I even did it with my kids school. I don't like to give you, you know, candy floss or what I call frivolous tips, real nitty gritty ones that I use myself. Whenever I went to the mother and toddler group with my kids, I talked to those mothers. I connected with the fathers, you know, saying, this is what I'm good at. I am job searching. You know, do you know anyone who works in this area? I just asked everyone. That's how I built my network. In fact, it was one of the mothers in the mother and toddler group who actually gave me a booklet that had the names of all the employers that I wanted to connect with. And they also told me, you know, how to commute to it and how to figure out landing an interview with them. It was a connection that I built from what you would not have expected right and so do not disqualify anybody around you let them know what you want to achieve be very clear about what you're trying to reach for what you're pursuing and just connect but be honest make meaningful connections don't be i always like to say that it's always better to be humble so what i do is just say hey, hi you know how are you doing you know, um, I just wanted to just learn a bit more about what you do and let the conversation flow. Nobody wants to connect with someone who is constantly pitching at them. Be honest. When I say be honest, just learn to meet people. Just talk about whether it's sports or, you know, your interests. Find out about the other person and see where the conversation goes naturally a meaningful connection where the person knows that you care about them and that you you are actually listening don't make it just about you you know just about you trying to get ahead and just about you know employment a conversation a dialogue a meaningful connection is two ways okay um one of the things that you must not forget though is it's going to get hard the the road is long um these tips and these strategies will absolutely help. They helped me, but you've got to remember not to quit. Don't quit. Um, there might be days where it seems difficult or is especially hard. I appreciate that right now, COVID has, has disrupted so much for us. Um, it may take a little bit longer. It, you know, will take a lot of networking, a lot of conversations, but don't give up. You owe it to yourself not to give up. Remember that you are worthy. You have value. You hold value. You need to learn to communicate that value to those who are listening, you know, through your job search um, documents. Uh, but don't forget, you bring something to the table always. So if an employer says no, I take it as a not now. And I ask myself, how can I improve? How can I communicate my value better? What do I need to tweak in my resume or in my, my resume, my LinkedIn profile, you know, or my cover letter or in my conversations and how I approach my, how I approach people? What can I tweak? Don't give up. It just means not now. Okay. Just not now. Just re-strategize. Is there, a, is there feedback that you can ask for? Ask for feedback. Ask your friends and family, your new peers, your new network. People depending on you know their time that they have, um, how big, for example, the search was, if this is an employment search that you're embarking on, um, they may not have time. But if they do, I say always ask, thank you, you know, for letting me know the outcome because I'm working on growing and developing myself. You know, can you spare a few minutes to give me feedback? Don't give up. It's easy, you know, to get down on ourselves when things are difficult, but honestly, keep driving forward. Um, there is something that Paul Ogunkoya always shares. Everything is about time and seasons. Pay attention, recognize, look for the signal. 
in the season that you're in is it the season where you need to sow the seeds so by that I mean you keep keep chugging away keep applying to the positions that you know that you would love to do that you're passionate about that they are aligned with your goals they're aligned with your value they're aligned with your skill sets keep applying and if one of them does not work out move on to the next one but don't give up on yourself do not give up on yourself you were designed with purpose you were designed with strengths you were designed with skills you were designed with a unique personality you bring that uniqueness to every role and every position the more confident you are the more self-aware that you are about what those skills are i believe that that's the more you will shine you will shine with your peers you will shine you know with your team continue to add value to every team that you're with do not give up on yourself and i wanted to share something that i think is timely and that is self-belief I've, I've talked i've touched it a little bit you know i've called it confidence i've talked i've called it building up your self-esteem but i really have to say that self-belief at the moment you know with with the killing of george floyd and countless others it is it's more than important right now to recognize how significant you are how filled with value you are how much you need to work hard to drown out the negative voices and the conversations you need to know that there is nothing wrong with being a person of color you are not less than because you're black and i say this yes as part of these strategies because we are facing a lot at this moment in time we have been for years but it's more important very much so at this time we have to elevate and empower each other that voice and the voices and the conversations that is driving in self-doubt, insecurity, it needs to be mitigated. You have to find and surround yourself with cheerleaders and sponsors and mentors. Find mentorship programs to be a part, a part of. Find groups that you can be a part of. And remember to find employer environments that respect you, that acknowledge your strength, that acknowledge that you have a purpose and you have a gift and you have talents to actually release and to give and to share with this world. Why do I say this? Because as a professional, as someone who has been within the coaching, the leadership training world, I know that many of us are battling with this at the moment because we're hearing the, the atrocious and the silly and, and the evil conversations. And so I dare say, I said it the other day, I tweeted it, I am going to be audacious. I am going to dare elevate, empower, and speak into your life and remind you that you're a person of value and that you've got to take that confidence into all areas of your goal setting whether you're looking for your next employment you are you know dealing with fitness goals your goal setting a relocation yourself you have to work to mitigate those voices that insecurity if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the tips don't forget to like share subscribe leave a comment and hit the notification button. It was great hanging out with you today. Have a good day.